Have you ever just thought to yourself, why me? Why is life so unfair? What do other people see? When they watch me walk by, when I catch my reflection, people run like I have a contagious infection. But it's not my mental health. I know that can be crushing. I'm talking about plaque psoriasis. Bet you didn't see that coming. I'm sick of the judgment, the discomfort and itching. Vitama Cream is the once daily steroid-free treatment I know I've been missing. Vitama Tepinarov Cream 1% is a prescription topical treatment for adults with plaque psoriasis. Do not use if you're allergic to Vitama Cream. The most common side effects of Vitama Cream include red raised bumps around the hair pores, pain or swelling in the nose and throat, skin rash or irritation, including itching and redness, peeling, burning or stinging, headache, itching and flu. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take and if you're pregnant or plan to be. Ask your doctor if Vitama Cream is right for you. You deserve more from your topical. To learn more, visit topicaluprising.com. Hey guys, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. And trust me guys, it works. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And the best of all... It is totally free. Yes, totally free. So download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hope you can hear me. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you just fine. All righty. How to test everything. I had to test everything to make sure my end was working. And- no, well, you see, you know what I think it is, Marco? Hmm. I had a similar problem with uh, someone trying to record a podcast on Anchor, and it wouldn't work. And I think I know that, I believe it. it's my microphone because I'm not using headphones. Mm-hmm. And it always works on Zoom because that's where I do all of my work. But it mm-hmm. seems like every other platform, it's almost like you need to use headphones with this microphone. Probably, or something. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's... Uh... That's the first time I've ever ran through that problem through Microsoft Teams. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna have to get a pair of headphones and, and see if that makes a difference. But because right now I'm just using my uh my Bluetooth ones, but f- I'm using those for I guess like as a speaker and then this microphone as my microphone and oh yeah and so I mean I thought it was on my end, but um no was, no. no. Um, but yeah, because the yeah. I used to use RiverStream, but then I used google duo and i didn't mind google duo but then um on how they did it like what's the recording came out i didn't like how it came out and so then i did microsoft teams and that's what i've been uh using i mean i guess i could have been using zoom but that was uh, i don't know why i just completely yeah. forgot about zoom and so yeah i just stuck with teams yeah no it's it is quite nice because you you can have different audio files so, you know, it, it makes it really easy where if one of the people are not speaking loudly enough where they're um, speaking too loud, you can you can adjust each individual person without messing up the entire file, mm-hmm. which one that I like it. So now yeah, I know with teams, I know my uh, the episode that just came out yesterday I was with a former CPS worker. And on his end, you could when I heard back the audio, it sounded just fine. But then when I heard it back on uh I believe it was uh spotify 
um, it sounded pretty, his end sounded pretty quiet. And I'm like, well, mm-hmm. I know when I, when I, uh, when I went through it, it sounded just fine. Even when I like, re- uh, before I even published it, it sounded just fine. But now his end sounds a little bit too quiet. My end sounds good. And like how you said, it does with teams, the two audio files don't come out. It's only just one, just one oh, big really? recording. Yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe there's an option. I mean, I'm not that advanced in any of that yet. Yeah. Um, so I mean, there could be an option, but so far that I know, um, yeah. it only came out with, it only comes out with one. The one. Yeah. 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 No, there, there's been a lot of mistakes on the podcast journey. Like, you know, some amazing conversations that just either didn't record or they didn't come out properly. And then, you know, you lose all, all of those files, but it's how you learn, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. cause I mean, as starting with the, I mean, I'm a one man team. So when I get busy and I just get so much stuff that happens, um, I completely forget about like with the, with the podcast and I'm like, Oh shoot, I got to tell them. That's why uh, I get in through the email. It kind I could kind of somewhat uh, feel like your frustration a little kind of like, Oh, yeah. come on, man. Like, and I, and I mean, I felt bad, but uh, I'm like, well, that's, I mean, I'm a one man team. I mean, when I get piled with a lot of stuff, I can't just try to uh, do a bunch Delegate. of stuff at the same time. Um, yeah. And um, I mean, like I said, I mean, right now I'm just, I'm just a small one, but until until I can hire people, then then I hope yeah. I can. That, it, then it makes it out. a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause then, for sure. Because uh, then I also have not only uh, my work, bills, all the fun stuff, the podcast. And then I also have um the real estate. Well, like my, trying to get my real estate license, um, to just to be an agent, so I can learn real estate that way. So then, uh, once I get older and have the money, I can invest in real estate, and I kind of know on what I'm doing rather than just thinking I know by watching YouTube videos. Step in and then get completely screwed because I don't know what I'm doing. Or I don't yeah, really definitely. know. And real market. estate is one of those things that is very scary to some people because, you know, it's this, like really big thing. But what I've come to learn is there's so many opportunities to invest in real estate, like whether you want to be a real estate agent, you want to invest in real estate. But I recently learned from a friend um, of this kind of like intermediate position that's called rental arbitrage. Have mm-hmm. you heard about that? I feel like I have. I've heard of arbitrage. Uh, before um but oh yeah, yeah. go it, ahead and explain it's, it. it it's this really cool thing um that that my friend uh told me about and it's it's basically where you rent out a whole property from a landlord or from whoever so you take on the responsibility of paying the rent each and every month and what you do is you find individual tenants for each room and you scale up the price a bit and then you take whatever profit so it's kind of like an Airbnb kind of scene. Like that—that mm-hmm. that is what Airbnb is, except you do it on like a longer scale renter thing. Because it, if if you think of like landlords and big investors, they don't want to deal with each, each individual person. So what they do is they want to rent it out to one person and make it a done deal. So then you come in there and then you fill each individual spot for a small profit. And then, you know, a, a few of the people that I know, they're making... 50% margins where they're renting a property for three grand a month and they're make and, and they're earning 6,000. So minus cost, you have 3000 profit. Dang. Yeah. Like, yeah. But it's, it's like one of those, uh, one of those things where people don't get told all of these opportunities, right? Like you don't get told this at school. Um, most of the, the time your, your parents won't teach you about it. But it's just one of those things that you just learn over the course of time that there are so many opportunities to start investing. Because mm-hmm. the main, the when people hear investing, the main one they know is uh, just in the regular little stock market. And that's still even a great way to invest. Um, but people don't know the other ways to invest. Like, yes, you can keep your money in the stock market, do whatever, do however uh, you want and whatnot. But then... Um, people hear real estate and they think, oh, that's too hard. Let me just put in money in the stock market and that's it. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, if you know how to, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you know how how to put it everywhere, 
you you come and realize, hey, you know, real estate investing can is also great. And same with the stock market and crypto for how it is right now, it's kind of iffy. Um, for it's, how it's a bit like, dicey, yeah. For what's going on, I mean, I don't know if you heard about the whole FTX thing. Big that's time. that's uh, that really screwed up the market, and now people are really even wondering: should you even invest in crypto anymore because of that? And yeah. so right now, it's just, and I mean, it's in high school, it's just you learn subjects that don't really matter at at all, and once you get to college, even then, sometimes in college, they're like, okay. Do your generals and maybe do one or two classes of what you, what you're majoring in, but also fill in with these classes that don't really make sense. Like, yeah, like when yeah, I went to college, and, you know, that's like one of those things where it's like you know everybody gets told to invest in, in the stock market, in crypto, and in, in real estate. But my philosophy for investing, until you've made a more substantial amount of money, is investing in yourself first. Like in, mm-hmm. investing in yourself first and your personal development is by far the most important because you it's it's a non-taxable, it doesn't go up with inflation, and it it holds with you for life. And then and then from there, you know, if you're starting a business, then you can invest in your own business. And once you've done those two, then you can invest in either the stock market, crypto, or the uh, uh, tr- uh, traditional. Um, stock market but that's the one thing that people neglect a lot um and what i've learned in in business is that personal development is 80 percent of it at least you know just like becoming an above average person and that's something people neglect is because they they want their money to grow immediately but they don't think of improving themselves and improving their own skills Mm -hmm. first because like how you said i mean they want to people want to improve their money and whatever but then yeah you have to go back to yourself and say what am i doing what can i do for to fix myself in order for that to happen because if you just say oh yeah you make money stock market boom let me just put my money in there unless if let's say you're a greedy person you you don't know how to manage your money well you, you know you just a lot of things that you need to fix within yourself just just investing especially if you have a lot of like anger problems and whatnot it when when you put a lot of money in there and it's just a bad a bad quarter companies aren't doing that great then uh, just anger uh, can come yeah. out and that's not that's not good and then that's where the whole gambling comes into play where they say oh well, if i just keep buying more it'll go up and yeah i mean it's yeah yeah and and, you know, that's it. like, it's just one of those things where, um, like when, when you're either, you know, growing a business or you're trying to pursue anything, like a lot of it is, is relearning what it means to be successful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, especially when it comes to a beliefs, like, like money, for example, like I'm sure we, we've all been told those, those common narratives around money, like money doesn't grow on trees, money's hard to make people who have money are all evil or, or they're all corrupt. Like we don't realize it, but that has a really strong impact, especially when you're told that when you're a kid mm-hmm. and then you, you grow up and, and you genuinely believe that. So when you start accumulating any amount of money, you're going to think that it's bad. So you're going to limit yourself to how much you can make. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing that I've noticed. Um, when I, when I first started growing my business is that the strategy wasn't the hard thing to learn. Like you can learn business strategy very easily, but it's, it's going internally and and rewiring all of those limiting beliefs you have have around money, around success. Uh, And only when you start doing that is when you're going to start seeing real growth. Mm Mm-hmm. Because um, I know, because I when I went to college, um, I first went to cause you just like a lot of high school kids. You go, you want to get out of high school. You kind of don't really know it, what to expect, what you really want to do in college or in life. And so when I went to college, um, I've even before I graduated, I kept telling my parents, um, I'm out of uh, my siblings, my older brother and my younger sister. 
um, and just the family alone. I'm gonna be the richest one. I'm gonna be the one with the most money. And yada yada yada. And then getting out of during high school, I kept repeating it to myself, and I'm like, okay, I see a lot of people who do games and whatnot are successful. Let me go to computer science, and then I went to computer science, and it obviously it was hard. Uh, but it's just because how fast they move. So I went to business administration, uh, but then that's when COVID happened. And then I I guess kind of I did classes online, but when I, again, I was still lost. And as I kept getting older, watched more videos on YouTube and whatnot about just business, I started realizing a lot of things that they teach you um, in business classes in school, a lot of the times, a lot of those a lot of those graduates aren't going to start their own business. They're just, they're just going to go join, obviously get employed by another business just to help them out. But really they don't know how to really use that into their own. If they want to create their own business, they're not really using that to even help them. And even sometimes um, a lot of things that they're getting taught. Yes. It's a lot of big names, of like a very important stuff. But you're getting taught by someone that probably has, is only reading by a book, doesn't really have the real world experience, neither do you. And so then once you are out there, you don't really know what you're doing. Or let's say you want to start a business. Yes, you may you may have a bachelor's in uh, a business administration, but when you go out, do it your own, you're a nobody because you got you. Yes, you you knew you knew how to do it in school, but those practices weren't put into real life situations. So now you're kind of you're back into square one, and Definitely. that's uh and oh to me I'm not saying uh college is a bad thing for whatever you want to do, depending on whatever you want to do. Whether most of the time it's like in the health field and whatever, perfect. No, you need it. But to me, when it comes to a lot of business stuff, people learn more doing they go out and do it themselves they learn more that way i mean yeah you can learn about finance and a bunch of other stuff uh, but i feel like you learn the most when you go ahead and do it because you can know through the fails through, through the failures through the successes what works and what doesn't you can get told what works in school but you're not when you, you're not really applying that to to your own business yeah and no to me yeah, it's it's um <clears throat> you know like I did 4 years in in college and it was it was quite valuable. Um and there and there definitely is a place for colleges and and universities like you had mentioned depending on on what your intentions are. Um but yeah, you you are completely right especially when it comes to things like business school. I mean, I have personally never never gone to business school, so I I can't relate on personal experience but from what i've heard from friends that have gone um you are right a, a, a lot of the times you don't you don't get taught how to build a business you you usually become a ceo or something else and again there's nothing wrong with that but the notion that that by doing four years you're going to be guaranteed to start a successful business is nonsense because prior to 2020 at zero business experience i was a mechanic for nine years like i knew nothing about business but a year and a half into growing my my business not only have i started profiting money but i've built it to a point where i can do it full time mm -hmm. so i just saved myself like two and a half three years of nonsense right so to me the most important thing is just taking action and you are right. You learn so much more from doing something and then failing and then learning from those mistakes and applying it to, uh, to your, your future. And mm -hmm. that's something that, you know, I hope more people, more people learn. Okay. With, uh, <clears throat> when, like I said, when people get taught business in school and whatnot, um, just like, I mean, you've probably heard the norm of, uh, the nine to five rat race, you know, probably a lot of people have heard that term and how schools teach you to become an employee, not an employer, which, you know, here and there it can, it can be true. Um, but because a lot of those kids that do come out getting a business degree, 
some are still lost because again they they learn how to become an employee and but like let's say they they went to school because they want to start a business they want to learn how to do it but throughout the whole entire time that they were in school they just they're they're lost on how on how to even start a business because you only get taught you're only getting taught the back end not right. not what you not really need to end. do not, yeah. cannot, not for the forefront center because just like in uh really just like with anything i mean if like a um i don't know if you're a mcdonald's and and you're working like let's say you want to be uh i don't know uh, the owner of mcdonald's like of that franchise but then once you realize oh you got to do all this other stuff and then you do all that and you're like oh now you got to work from the very bottom, so you have to become an employee, then go up to a manager, and then a general manager. Just keep going up the ladder, and you're like, "Well, I, I, I know the back end, but I don't know how to like. I don't like. I want to become that, but I can't because I don't. Yeah. I don't have any yeah. any of that experience. That's why I feel an intention is the most important thing because, you know, I have a friend, and she like her 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 coaching business is doing over a hundred thousand dollars a year. So she's doing pretty well, but she's also going back to business school because that's what she genuinely wants to do. Mm-hmm. And that's why intention is so important. Like I know a lot of people working regular nine to five jobs, but they love it. They love going to work every single day and it's their passion. And that's completely okay. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with it, but to me and in my own experience, what's not okay is settling for that even though you know that you can do something greater Mm -hmm. and especially not excelling because you're either too afraid to do it or you're too afraid of what other people are, are, are going to think. And so that fear stops so many people and that's not okay. And that's Mm -hmm. why that I got so inspired and so driven to help people along that journey, because, you know, if you're surrounded with the exact same friends that you've been hanging around since high school and the same family members, and they have a narrative of what you should be doing in your life, like staying at a mediocre job, even though you're completely miserable. Like that's, that's suffering. And I felt that way. Mind you, like, you know, the intention was not for the friends and families to limit you, but that's just the paradigm they're operating under. So when you want to break that paradigm and you want to expand and you want to pursue your own passions, that really triggers a lot of people subconsciously. Mm-hmm. And that's where it takes a lot of courage and a lot of confidence to basically ignore what other people are saying and just going after what you want. Mm-hmm. Like my girlfriend, um, she's going to school to be in the human services career. Um, but right now she's a team lead at Walmart. And a lot of people, I've, I mean, I, I also work at Walmart for right now. But in the times that I've worked at Walmart for the past, like, like do three and a half years, maybe close to four a lot of people there are miserable as shit and she loves it. Like she loves a job. Sometimes when she, she's just so passionate on what she does, happy to go to work. Uh, uh, the salaried managers kind of look at her like, why are you happy working here? Like, why are you happy working? And, and I tell her, don't, don't let their, don't let them being miserable at that job change that because i told her if you decide to have a career at walmart i'm not gonna look down on you i mean you can because walmart you you do it the right way you're gonna you're gonna make a career out of it and with me obviously me wanting to do the podcasts and then get into real estate where i'm i'm not working hour well yes i can be working hourly but i'm not getting paid hourly i'm not getting paid a salary um i'm starting with nothing uh, and having to grow that now I in school I was known I'm like a known person but not like a popular person and so then starting out having to do this uh having to get listeners having to people to get interactions uh for my post and for the podcast is really challenging because again I'm not people know me but they're I'm not like the popular person so I'm not yeah. getting the engagement that I want and my girlfriend always looks at me like, well, how, why are you still doing it? Like, how do you do it? Like, I, like, and she, and there's been times in her face where she 
kind of says, you know, kind of just like stop in a way. But also she knows that I'm I'm passionate about doing this. And I've told my parents about it. I've told her family about it. And they kind of just look at me like, oh, cool. Cool yeah. that you're doing that. Like, we don't really care, but cool. So when you're going to work or and yeah. I'm like, you're not listening. You're like, I'm trying to tell you what I want to do. And some of you guys just don't listen. Or some of you guys say you guys support me by saying, oh, that's great, whatever. But I don't see you guys aren't even listening to one episode or watching one video or even supporting me saying, hey, you know, uh, we'll get you a little small gift for the podcast or anything like like it's always like a support because like I said, um, people are scared to take it because of what people might say, but then also the support from their own people where you may have a lot of family members that you know, that know you, but then when you want to start your own business, a lot of them, when you tell them, they would be like, oh, well, that's good. You might have some support. You might have to say, oh, well, you know, here are, here's the risk factors, whatever. And then you do it, you keep doing it. And some of those keep just saying, oh, cool. Cool. That you keep doing it. So, yeah. so what, how much money do you have? How much money are you making? And you're like, well, I'm not, I'm anything yet, man. I'm just, I've got to go. And yeah, they're like, because- oh, well, then it's worthless. You're like, no, it, it's not. It, it doesn't click for so many people, right? And like, that's like, there a lot of people are, are operating under a certain paradigm of like what, what they consider to be right and what they consider to be successful. So when you start something new, like a podcast or doing anything that you're genuinely passionate about, even though they're not against it, the it just doesn't click for them because they don't, they don't understand what that means. Right. And like, that's why it's so important to surround yourself with people that you want to become like, and like, you know, that, that whole saying of you're the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with, it's very cliche, but it's cliche for a reason. It's because it's so true. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, so if you, if you keep surrounding yourself with, with the same people that are, that are limiting that growth, nobody's ever going to grow. But mm-hmm. then, like that's where it gets a bit hard sometimes, where you have to disconnect a little bit and search for those new people, search for those new opportunities to meet new people that are more aligned with your vision. And it's scary fast how much you start succeeding when you surround yourself with the right people. And that's why I'm such a big fan of going to networking events, doing these podcasts with a lot of different people. Because, you know, you start meeting a lot of people and you start shaking, shaking a lot of hands. And next thing you know, you have opportunities coming at you left, right and center. Mm-hmm. But that's not possible unless you surround yourself with new people. And that is what I would say is the most important thing for somebody who's starting in entrepreneurship who, or who is starting at the pursuit of, of whatever they're trying to achieve. Because mm-hmm. I know there's uh there was a saying I forgot where I uh, heard it where it said somewhere about if you're the smartest person in the room no or well it was something like that it was some something about yeah. if you're the smartest person in the room like I think it was like get out of it or like it was I I don't remember all of it but I know it has to do something about being the smartest person in the room but if you're the dumbest person in the room you'll then become the smartest I don't remember the full saying it's so true kind of know what it's you're so true about. yeah i don't know if you know what i'm talking I, about i i i i don't remember what the exact quote says but it is right i mean there, like there's a reason why we have two ears and, and one mouth because you don't you don't ever learn with your mouth open you only learn with your mouth closed mm-hmm. and that also takes a lot of humbleness because so many people including myself like i had a really big ego um and I would never let others speak. But there's there's a lot of wisdom in realizing that some every single person knows something that that you don't, and you have something to learn from from everybody. Whether mm-hmm. you know, you know, somebody is a lot younger than you, or somebody is in a different field, and you feel superior, they still know something that you don't. And the wisest thing to do is just shut your mouth and listen to what other people say. Because I can guarantee you, you're going to walk away from that conversation 
a lot smarter. But not only that, but also like if you're in an argument, we'll say, if, you know, there's a couple of people ar- arguing. If you just shut your mouth and you sit there and you watch a couple of people argue and then they all look at you, you for, for your opinion on this, on this argument, you're going to be able to articulate such a better argument and settle the entire debate because you let everybody say their point of views and you gave yourself a chance to process what's all going on and formulate a proper argument. And that's why, you know, again, there's just such wisdom in just sitting back and letting others speak first, in my opinion. That's why in a lot of things, I'm so like in the middle because when I hear both sides, you can pick out, you can pick, okay, this is what's wrong with you. This is what's wrong with you. And, but this is what you're good at. This is what you're, this is the good thing you're saying. You kind of just, you know, want to meet in the middle. And that's what, um, like with management, um, when, you know, still being an associate, when you know, and let's say if you watched an associate, I don't know, get in trouble by a customer or whatever, and you watch it unfold and the associates try to explain to management, when management won't even let them talk, you get a little bit frustrated. You're like, let them speak, let them hear, because you know, like, like, like you're like, you, you like when you're listening, you're like, you know, like you, you know what's going on. Let them speak. Let let them let the management get their own opinion. And sometimes you just want to step in and say, okay, so this is what we can do. So yada yada yada. But obviously, a lot a lot of the world and never works like that. You know, you yeah. don't. And and I mean. He, and I know it's a lot of people experience that type of stuff. Like even growing up, like as a child, um, you only know one. Sometimes you only know one side until you start growing up and you start listening. Let's say your parents argue, you start realizing, hey, like I'm starting to see some stuff that that that's that's not good. And then when you want to sometimes step into foot, it's, it's some you know, they kind of look at you like, oh, like like you've like you've actually been paying attention. Yeah. Because you're starting to trying to trying to bring solutions into the table, and I don't know, like, yeah, definitely. And like, here's my opinion on bosses versus leaders, or management versus leaders. I see the boss mentality as a very ego driven position. Mm-hmm. You know, it's typically somebody who wants everybody to, to follow by their rules, somebody who who wants to be the one in power and, and who wants to be the smartest person. But the leader is someone who is driven by growth and who wants his entire team to grow. And it's more of a collaboration versus a competition. Mm-hmm. Because when you're in collaboration, you have the notion that if you help other people grow, everybody's going to succeed. And that there's enough success for everybody. Mm -hmm. But, you know, typically bosses, um, there's a lot of scarcity around it. They feel like if they're not in charge and they're not controlling everybody, that somebody else is going to take their power. When in reality, there's enough success, there's enough growth for everybody. And that's why I see there's, there's a really big difference. But unfortunately, most people operate under that, that ego driven mindset. That's why a lot of businesses can fail because when yeah. when you have that one boss that just wants to be controlling, a base saying, "Look at me, I have power. Fuck you. I don't care about you. Just listen to me. Listen to what I have to say and go do it." It's and when when you don't have a leader, when you don't have leaders building, creating other leaders, it's 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 gonna fall down because um, how I because like again with Walmart. When management, because I have manage, a manager, nice dude, you know, perfect. Sometimes he knows what he's doing. Sometimes he doesn't. But he's scared about upper management. And there's some and there's some upper management that they'll listen to you. They like they will actually be a leader rather than a boss. Like you don't see him as, oh, I'm scared because that's my manager. I don't want to get fired. And, you see them as they're a friend of me because they'll listen and they'll like, they'll talk to me. I feel comfortable with them. And if, and if I have ever have problems, I don't feel scared to even talk to them because they, I, I feel comfortable with them because 
they're they're helping me and yeah and then when the, and again when you keep going up the ladder when it's like the store manager one of the bigger guys and they again a lot of them have big egos where they're like well you know like you, you can just tell when you look at them that they they just have one of the biggest egos because again yeah. they're like they're one of those people of be scared of me because I'm the biggest person in the room. You say something I don't like, or you don't, or you do some, you don't do what I tell you to do. By your fire, it's like that's yeah, that's, that doesn't help. That it's, doesn't help anyone. It's such a big like like it's such a big different presence that you can notice it right away. Like mm-hmm. on my first job when I was a mechanic, the person in charge, you know, had a really big ego, and you can tell because he was extremely bossy. He was very controlling. But when I stepped into my second job working uh, for the school division where I was living at the time, he had a very growth driven mindset. And I would really consider him a leader, not a boss, because whenever there was an opportunity for me to learn, he would let me do it. Whereas traditionally, you know, if, if there was a shitty job, I would always get it because I was always the new person. But when I was working at at the other job, if there was an opportunity for me to do something that I've never done before and that was more advanced, he would make sure that I would do it every single time because he wanted me to grow and he wanted me to to learn. Mm -hmm. So that's the really big difference is somebody who basically wants to keep you down and, you know, keep you failing versus somebody who's actively trying to make you grow and make you succeed in whatever endeavor you, you're you're doing. And that would, I would say, honestly, if I had to choose money over having a good boss or, or, or a good leader, I would always choose a good leader because, you know, at, at the end of the day, like, yes, money is important, but if you're not happy and you're not fulfilled, money doesn't mean shit, right? And, and that's why I feel like, you know, making sure that you're genuinely fulfilled and you're excited to, to go to work every single day is the most important thing because we're going to work for the majority of our lives. So you might as well make it something that you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's completely right. I mean, I, uh, not at this new store, but an old store, um, the other, uh, well, at the time they called them CSMs or customer service managers. Now they call them team leads, but at the time they were CSMs, uh, most of them, yeah, they like I said, they they just love to be in power, and you can just and, and you just knew that. But there was one of them, um, her name was Jenny. She, I, everyone loved her because she she was more of a leader than than a boss. Even though yes, she was the boss of all of them, but she was more of a leader. She when you needed help, she would go and help you. She wouldn't just say, "Oh, well, there's no one, there's no one that I can send out, so good luck," and they'll walk away. She'd say, mm-hmm. "Okay, I will tell upper management." to send someone on the floor so then I can go out there and help you or what, or whatever the case may be. And that to me, I mean, I, I wish I, I could, I would stay at that store, but I moved. Um, but I, when I saw that, um, I just kept saying we need more people like her, like in, in higher position too. Like we, like just cause the store manager is making six figures we need if, but if that manager acted like how this team lead did, Oh, we would, we would we would get some, so much more done. Like it, we would see people advance, and the attitude that managers get uh, bring out can affect the attitudes to the associates, because that's where associates can get cranky, can get angry because of management or stress because of management. But if if a leader knows how to control all of that, leader knows even though in the most stressful times, still knows how to lead well you'll enjoy your job you'll be, you'll 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 enjoy going to it because you won't feel stressed you won't feel angry you won't feel anxious because of your manager or you're not scared of one minute you just pop your phone out to check the time and then you get yelled at and pulled into the office because you looked at because you looked at the time and i mean that's a, to me i mean i feel like well we, we just need more, uh, more of those type of people and I think uh, part of me is a people person. And when I have had to, I guess you could say kind of leave people in uh, uh, at my job, 
I I do it like when I'm when I'm doing it because of all of the leadership experience that I have seen and then also the bad experience I never in my head I'm like you're not going to be that person that's only a boss you're going to be that person that's a leader even if you're an associate right now you're still going to be a leader to them because they'll look up to you even when you're gone they'll still say this guy left a good reputation and he has helped some people and then also when I'm an employer and employing people I want my employees to feel welcome to feel loved at when working with me and being a leader because if they decide to leave I'd say hey I I grew a leader there and so I'm glad wherever he goes I'm gonna I'm gonna be perfectly fine wherever wherever he lands because I know he's a this person's a great person because I created someone rather than oh I'm just a boss and tell him uh, I'll just tell him what to do because you guys gotta listen to me it's like no Mm -hmm. we don't yeah like you know it's 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 amazing to me sometimes, you know, seeing people and, and they don't realize the power of just being a genuine good person. Like when you're genuinely a good person and you're a good leader, you live you leave impressions on people forever. I mean, you know, I'm never gonna forget that one boss that I had a couple of years ago because he demonstrated to me what it is to be a good leader. So w- when you're able to lead by example and you're a good person with good intentions, you're going to always be successful no matter what endeavor you, you go in. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't mean to completely change this, but I think because I don't have any premium subscription with Zoom, it's telling me I have yeah. a minute left. I yeah, <laughs> uh, Zoom Zoom just just changed that where... Uh, you have 30 minutes free, but if you want to go over 30 minutes, you have to get like a premium membership. Oh, and that fun. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, is it for the meeting or is it just recording? Uh, it's for the entire meeting, so that the meeting is will probably stop. And then I'd probably have to re <laughs> restart uh, it. Yeah, re- reinvite you. Yeah. All right. Let me just end it now, and then I'll just uh re-invite okay, sure. you yeah and then um way. also um just on a little side tangent um one what when we're done the podcast do you mind sending me the audio and video files so i so i can get my team to to like edit clips for uh, myself oh uh, yeah i can do that yep awesome yeah like you can either send it to like google drive or like email whatever is mm-hmm. probably fine all right yep i'll do that all right and... sweet i'll see you right. in a minute all right sounds good I can't hear you right now. Let me see. It's on my end. All right. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, j- j- just to let you know, I have like 10 ish minutes and until I, I have to leave. Um, Alrighty. Yeah. Yeah. Like oh. a, a, a 10, 15 minutes ish. So, 10, 15 minutes. All right. Uh, so, what's because it's because you are, do you live in Canada or where do you live again? Yeah. So, I'm. I'm originally from uh, Manitoba, Canada. Mm-hmm. So like, if you're not too sure with the geography, it's like the, the middle province. So it's above it's North Dakota. Well, North Dakota. Oh. Yeah. And uh, I uh, grew up there for like the first 20 years of my life. And then when, when COVID happened, uh, I actually bought a camper van and I moved to British Columbia on the West coast. Oh, yeah, and and like that that was a whole that was a whole adventure in in its own. Um, we can go into it if you want. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, because right now for for you, is it also three twenty two or would it be? It's it's four twenty four twenty two. Four twenty for yeah. you. So well, because right right now I'm in um, I'm in I'm in Toronto. Toronto. Uh. Yeah, which is like the east. Coast post yeah, kind of like deal so but um so you'll probably be uh, yeah, man, so you like, have it till um, like what 3 30 335 ish is when probably the time you have or 
three thirty-five ish. Oh, yeah, I guess I forgot for you. It would be four thirty or four four thirty-five. Uh, four four thirty-five, four forty. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty. But um, but yeah. So I grew up in Manitoba, and when COVID first hit, like I ended up breaking up with my girlfriend at the time, and like I like I was just so miserable, right? Like and. COVID really gave me gave me an opportunity to slow down mm-hmm. and to really look at my life and see why that I was so miserable. Like I was on, I was on antidepressants for about 10 years. Um, Cause that's kind of what you did if you're depressed, right? Like if you're depressed, medicate, if you have anxiety, mm-hmm. medicate, you know, there was, like there was, there was a pill for everything. So like, you name it, I was on it. Right. Um, but COVID was really a blessing for me because it, it kind of slowed everything down and it made me realize why I was so miserable. And I, I started learning about um, psilocybin, like ma- uh, magic mushrooms. Mm-hmm. And I got really curious about the, their, their therapeutic effects because, you know, there were so many studies at the time of people taking them and having massive changes, either overcoming a, a, a addiction in a single dose or completely resolving uh, depression or anxiety. Mm-hmm. So I was obviously very intrigued because I was always interested in the more holistic approach. So I took a large dose of mushrooms and I was never depressed a single day in my life after that. I swear to God, like the medication really helped take, take the edge off, you mm-hmm. know, but taking one dose of the mushrooms literally cured me from depression and anxiety on the spot really oh yeah and not not only that but it made me realize why i was so depressed i had this massive insight and you know in the insight just to summarize it i started looking at my life and it was like okay well you know you're miserable because of your job you're miserable because you know you're not allowing yourself to grow like you need to spread your wings that was basically the whole message and so you know because covid you know had slowed down everybody's work I decided to take a two month vacation to uh, the Canadian Rockies, like in Banff Jasper area. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I I didn't have a plan. I literally just went and I just started, you know, driving around, exploring, hiking. And within a week, I knew that that was my lifestyle because I knew that I was longing for something, but I didn't know what it was because it was so suppressed by all the misery and all the internal suffering from my what I'll call my past life, you know, kind of mm-hmm. like pre pre awakening, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I knew that that's what I needed to do. So after that whole two month holiday, I had to go back home because I I actually had to finish college. So I I, I had two more months left. So I, I'd finished school, and then I basically broke it to my entire family that I was actually going to quit my job, sell my house, and I was going to move to the west coast of canada and they they took it surprisingly well they were very supportive they didn't understand they thought it was a bit crazy you know because like when you have a really good job you have a house and you have all of these you know you're basically living the uh, canadian or american dream Mm -hmm. and when you completely abolish that and you buy a damn camper van people look at you a bit a bit funny like you know are you are you thinking straight are you are like, are you okay? But man, was I happy? Like, dude, I was so excited. Like for the first time in my life, I had like excitement and joy and I was so pumped for life. And I started waking up energized, which is something that, that would never happen, right? Like when you wake up and you're miserable because you have to go to a job that, that you, you, that you don't like. And then you start waking up every morning, excited for life. Um, That's how I knew that you know, the the whole nomadic life was for me. Uh, So yeah, I ended up moving to British Columbia. Um, I I lived there for a bit, you know, I did van life, you know, worked odd jobs. Um, Mm. But then when the COVID restrictions lifted, uh, my girlfriend and I who had met in British Columbia, we we had went to Mexico. And we 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 lived in Mexico for six months. uh, While we were growing our businesses. Dang, you guys lived all the way in Mexico? Yeah, and you know, it was one of those things where 
you know, we were doing van life, right? So we were mm-hmm. traveling across Canada and um, gas started getting really expensive because of the war, you know? And oh, yeah. So and yeah. like, you know, when, when you start filling up your school bus, you know, which was my camper van and you're, you know, you're spending $220 for a tank of gas, you know, you like, Holy like, when my gas price hit $220, I cried a bit. I was like, okay, I, I cannot keep doing this type of lifestyle because it, it wasn't sustainable with how much money I was start, uh, with how much money I was making. So, you know, my girlfriend and I both d- decided that we would sell both of our vans, take the money and grow our businesses in Mexico because th- your money can stretch a lot further in Mexico, right? Like, the cost of living is about a, a quarter of what it is here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man, we, we, we literally just backpacked across Mexico uh, for half a year and it was the most eye-opening and amazing experience of my entire life. Holy crap. That's, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I know going back with the whole like mushroom experience, have you ever heard about uh, an ayahuasca? Ayahuasca? Yes. I have never done it personally. My girlfriend has, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a, such a big proponent of, you know, psychedelic drugs for therapeutic use. Mm-hmm. I feel like they have a huge potential and, you know, it's one of the reasons why they're becoming decriminalized in Canada is because there are so many benefits to it and so many proven benefits with virtually no side effects, mm-hmm. right? Like when you see people that are addicted to drugs or smoking or alcohol for years and they take a single dose of mushrooms, ketamine, whatever, and they're not, and they're not hooked anymore and they don't have any side effects. That's a pretty good estimate that what that medicine does works. But again, like the big reason why it's been, it's been um, illegal for so long, it's because on how good it works, right? Like if, if everybody's healthy, you don't have a pharmaceutical industry. You don't have a healthcare business. Um, mm-hmm. But that's where I see a lot of things changing nowadays is that people are becoming a lot more open to alternative medicines. And that's something that's really exciting is because I can tell you right here, right now, that if I didn't experience magic mushrooms, I wouldn't be where I am today. I would still be working at a job that are miserable. I would still be depressed. I would still be be suicidal, but I'm here. I'm excited for life every single day. I've started my own business. Like I've made a complete 180 multiple times over. Um, and I attribute and, and I attribute it 100% to having that experience. Hands down. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you really go back even to history, like our, like our ancestors, they didn't have any of the pharmaceutical stuff we have now. And so, I mean, when, like, what do you think, you know, they, they were using like mushrooms, a bunch of other stuff. And, um, and I know when I listened to a podcast of Joe Rogan's, um, when he was talking about with the birth of, I think it was like of Jesus Christ or, or something, I think the whole Christianity group, or whatever, um, when he said something about, if you look up Christ, like when you try to date it back, it reverts back to, I believe mushrooms or something something like that oh yeah there's there are a lot of of stories on how religion came from mushrooms i mean you know one you have um moses and the burning bush and if you look at at what the burning bush is it's actually a psychedelic plant that when you light it on fire it creates a a, uh hallucinogenic effect and then you have santa claus and -hmm. santa claus is known to be attributed with the amanita muscaria mushroom which is also slightly psychedelic and then you have the stoned ape theory where, you know, basically dictates that the human consciousness is, is attributed to psychedelics, which it, it makes complete sense because, you know, some of the most popular uh, psychedelic mushrooms are found in, in uh, animal feces. So when we were hunter gatherers and you're hunting for these animals, you're usually tracking them by their, by their feces. Mm-hmm. But, you know, imagine seeing little mushrooms popping out. And so, like, you would imagine they would have started taking those mushrooms. 
and they would have started having a lot of, you know, a lot of insights and their consciousness would start growing. And, you know, I'm not an expert by any means, right. But from my own research and from what I've heard from other people is that, you know, there was a huge uptick in, in human evolution. And, and the period was so short that it, it could not have been natural evolution. And mm-hmm. in that, in that short time frame, art started becoming a lot more relevant. Um, you know, philosophy started coming out religions. Now, if you've ever taken psychedelic mushrooms, that seems like it would be perfectly aligned with a lot of those theories. I mean, it, it makes sense because, I mean, when you think about it, uh, same with like art. I mean, when you look at some of the art, even looking at someone like be- from like way back in the day, you're like, this is really trippy. Like, I, oh, yeah. Like, like why? Who says I'm going to create this? And obviously, when you start learning all this mushroom stuff with the psychedelics, you start learning that could be a possibility on why this type of art was created because of the psychedelics. They they had exactly. that trip and said, you know what? I need others to see this too. And then again, it also with like religion, because I mean, even though, yes, I'm Catholic, I'm still very skeptical on a lot of this stuff. And like, you know, the Bible being one of them, it's always, you know, how did this religion come to occur? But there's like almost zero evidence. People say there is, but there's still zero known evidence. And then obviously learning it back with the whole psychedelics, you kind of like, well, it can kind of make sense on why some religions may have occurred and just not just religions in general, but just a lot of, just a lot of stuff, especially yeah. art. I mean, to me, when it, once I um, kind of dug deeper, I'm, I, I kind of opened my eyes. I'm like, wow, like it, um, the supposed dangerous drugs that people shouldn't be doing, you go back to their history and you realize it could have been a cause of a lot of things that yeah. we do now. Definitely. And, you know, I personally don't subscribe to the idea that there's a big white bearded man up in the sky, you know, named God could be can't prove it. So, um, but that's not my philosophy, but, and I'm not very religious, but when you look at all of these religions, whether it's, you know, um, Hinduism, Christianity, um, any religion, they all have the same universal truth. They all have different gods, um, different servants, but they all tie into the exact same truth. Like if if you separate yourself from the literal words that they're saying and you dig deeper into what they're actually saying, all the religions tie into the exact same thing, uh, which is ultimately spirituality. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's like I really like br- bridging the gap of spiritualism and science and physics. Because now quantum physics is proving what a lot of these philosophies were talking about, you know, about energy and, and about vibration and about manifestation. And that, that to me is what's really exciting is because you're taking all of these religious philosophies and they're being proven. Right. But again, it's, it's, it's maybe not like God and Jesus were, you know, these real people maybe they were but maybe they were just stories of experiences through Mm -hmm. psychedelic mushrooms Uh, maybe they were just philosophies who who really knows but i think the most exciting thing is is that we all get to have our own our own idea of of what it was i mean that's because i mean because even then when people try to depict how jesus looked or how god looks or whatever especially jesus a lot of churches here in america um they'll try to depict him as uh, as a white man but then you go yeah. back to history and you realize his, if you try to be historically accurate he's probably was um, yeah not only was he not white he's more darker brown to almost black to where he came to where he was born and the beautiful luscious hair that he has Probably also as it came to be, I mean, again, going back to history. And that's why to me, it's just so hard to, again, me being Catholic, it's still so hard for me to still try to see a lot of it as truth because I don't, I don't hate on people on their religion. I respect everyone with their religion. They can believe what they believe. 
but just to me it's always hard because it it's because they always try to tie in a uh, faith and you have to believe and whatnot it's like so me believing means true it, i know with like manifestation me believing where i want to be it can happen i can make it happen whatever but when it's a god it's like how can i really with something that i haven't that there's been no history almost zero proven history of this person being real how can i really trust that like how can i yeah. just say let me believe in this one guy and now it's now everything I do is because of this one guy and everything that everything, every successful thing that happens was because of that one guy. And like I told this one lady, this uh, psychic medium on one of my other podcasts, I told her how some people when they pray and they pray to, to live a better life, but then they don't apply what they're praying to the real life. It yeah. doesn't have, like, it doesn't have like it, like, bam, you want to, I pray to be a millionaire by, by 25 and then you yeah. don't do anything you're like and then you're yeah. 25 then you're pissed because you're not a millionaire you're like well it's not it's not the pray that didn't work it you didn't put in the work yeah you didn't, you didn't work. work yeah you didn't work you you prayed like it's to me praying is more so kind of a uh a promise like to your mind like praying like i hope like i pray that i can become better you're kind of telling yourself I like you, what you want to be, what you want to do. What you, I mean, obviously, I mean, I don't know some stuff when you prayed for someone's better health, you want their health to be better. I mean, you can only do so much, but when it's like praying about where you want to be like career wise or just in your life. So this God can only do so much because it all depends on you. You're, you're praying, yeah. but what the heck happened? What the heck happened? <laughs> Where, hold on, what the heck happened? I was talking and then it kicked me out of Zoom. Okay. I'm oh back. really? Yeah. Interesting. What's going on? <laughs> ah, fuck! I'll keep it like this. Um, All right. Um, but yeah, no, you you are completely right. And how I see it is that you know, I'm I, I'm a firm believer in like putting out out affirmations I, I i don't really pray but i do visualizations but how i see it is that you know if you want something to happen in your life or you want to attract something if you if you want well we'll say if you want to be a millionaire by the time you're 25 and you're like your intention is solid on that right it's not just going to come to you but what's going to come are the people and the opportunities to help you get to that goal. And that's what a lot of people don't, don't realize is they think that if they, if they just sit there and pray for what they want and think that it's going to come and fall in their lap, that doesn't usually happen. I mean, it might, but a lot of times what's going to happen is you're going to be the people you're going to, you're going to have opportunities show up for you to put in the work to, to, to get to wherever you want to get. And that's why, you know, ha having strong intuition and knowing that, when an opportunity comes that aligns with what you want to get, you've got to put in the work. And I feel like, you know, a really good way to, to end this conversation is, you know, if, if you don't know what to, what to believe in or whatever, it's just believe in yourself. Cause in the end, mm -hmm. like you, nothing else is, is proven. You, you can't prove anything else, but what you, but what you can prove is yourself. So you might as well believe in yourself that, you know, whatever comes your way, you can get it done. And that if you apply yourself, you're always going to be successful in, in whatever in, endeavor you want. Mm -hmm. Because the most successful people were the ones that believe in themselves. The most successful entrepreneurs were the ones that believe in themselves. Because even though, Definitely. even though what they're the outside source, they still said, I believe in myself. I know I could do this. And here they are doing what they're doing and exactly like yeah like the, the the one the one affirmation that i that i always tell myself is is i am my own greatest asset mm -hmm. you know and it it's true because you know pe people come and go opportunities come and go but you're with yourself for life so you know what i would say is invest in yourself take care of yourself love yourself and when you when you start loving yourself genuinely and you start taking care of yourself, 
that's when you're going to start being successful. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, Marco, thank, thank you very much. I uh, genuinely appreciate, you know, coming on to your podcast and, and uh, getting an opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you for wanting to be, uh, come on the podcast again. I, I do apologize for kind of doing uh, that last minute of rescheduling. Um, no worries. But, I mean, it's all hey, good, my I mean, friend. But if, I mean, if it happens again, we might even do a part two and keep going. Um, Love I mean, that. Yeah. Yeah. Like we, that. We, we should definitely, um, you know, stay in touch. Are you on Instagram at all? Uh, yeah, actually I am. Sweet. Yeah. Definitely give me a follow. Cause that's where I do most of my, my messaging. It's uh, mm -hmm. nomadic underscore Cody. And then, yeah, I would love to, you know, we, we can do a part two in, in, in the near future and, and we can definitely just, just keep this uh, relationship going. Yeah. Cause you now I, I really like to be talking about just exactly what we were talking about. Um, and I mean, it's sad how we can't uh, obviously go longer. Obviously we're busy in life, um, but if we can, uh, you know, come back later experience Definitely. new things and still come back with some different information new information whatever Big time yeah yeah, yeah. and uh and uh you know let's just you know stay in touch on on uh instagram and then and then yeah we can we we can definitely make something work sounds good this i, I was gonna make someone else's episode come out on christmas or on the 25th uh but because of how excited i am for this one i might just push hours awesome it's for Love christmas it. Uh, just so it's a nice Christmas type of episode transition. Yeah, talking about like yes. mindsets and all this other stuff. Sweet man, yeah. And then and then you know like like I'd mentioned, if you could just send the audio file and the video, and then what what my team is gonna do is like you know she'll like edit everything out uh, or like not edit things out, but she'll like make nice clips. And mm -hmm. then whenever I I post something, I'll I'll just like refer it back to to, to your podcast. So then my, uh, my audience can, can get a chance to uh, check out your podcast. Perfect. Perfect. Sounds good. Love that. Alrighty. Awesome. Marco, have a, have a fantastic week. Have a great Christmas and let's stay in touch. All right. Thank you. You too. You have a good one. Right. And I'll thank you. I'll follow you from both accounts, my personal and the podcast one. Okay. Just so awesome. you can see both. All right. Perfect. All right. Perfect. We'll talk soon. Bye. All right. See ya. Bye-bye.